Hello all, this is Halloween, and I'm back, like I said, with a 1920s special for you today. Now a lot of you probably going to a 1920s themed uh, New Year's Eve party, so I wanted to give you a little uh, tutorial about how the women actually dressed in the 20s. So when you think of the 20s, you probably think of fringy dresses, feather boas, Definitely pearls, long satiny gloves. How about this? The sequined headband. When in fact, the fashion of the 20s was quite different. So we're gonna be taking a deep dive into 1920s fashion and how the women actually dressed. Women being Clara Bow, Louise Brooks, Lillian Gish, Olive Thomas, and Theta Barra all women that define the 1920s. We'll also look at how they did their hair, their makeup, and their everyday fashion. Party fashion was almost the same as their everyday fashion. It was very nice either way, um, and it's very doable. If you're going to a party, you don't have to feel like you have to go get a fringy dress and a feather boa and a sequin headband, because that's not really true to fashion of that time. So um, I'm gonna be showing you how it's done. Let's get started. Today's gonna be a fun day. We will be revisiting some of the most iconic looks of the 1920s and also four of the most iconic silent film stars of the early 1900s and late 1800s, namely Louise Brooks with her bucket hat and the iconic bob. We'll be dressing her with this beautiful brown getup. It has a beaded diamond right up at the neck, gathering the material. And I got this for $5.98 at Goodwill. We're going to be accompanying this look with a flesh tone fishnet and brown wingtip low-heeled Mary Jane style shoes. I'm also going to decorate her with this beautiful fur-lined coat that I got yesterday for $35 at another thrift store, but it was in perfect condition. It is a traditional wool coat. This one's actually more of a 60s style, but they were all about furs in the 1920s, so I went ahead and bought it for mainly for this look, but um, I won't be wasting it. It won't go to waste. I'll get some use out of it. Next, we have Olive Thomas or Lillian Gish. Both were silent film stars in the early 1900s and both kind of coined this look. And when I think of this look, I think of a Victorian porcelain doll but both of them really made this look come to life in the 1920s and this was considered a flapper style now what you are seeing here is actually my wedding dress and i will be rocking that i did pay 175 dollars for this at la france and ebor in tampa and then i think i paid 83 for the hat so this was a splurge, but it was my wedding, so <laughs> I did spend quite a bit on that. Um, but these styles of dresses can be found at consignment shops, thrift stores, and things of that nature. I have seen them. So this is called a cupcake style 1920s reproduction gown. And then for the hair, I just had a human hair wig that I ringletted. So I styled it in ringlets. For Olive Thomas, I also bought this overcoat. It's kind of like a chiffon. It's not really a coat. It's a chiffon uh, wrap or um, cover-up sort of thing. But very cool. I thought it looked very much like the 20s, so that was only $4.98 at Goodwill. 
Next, of course, the it girl of the 20s, we would be talking about Clara Bow. She is known for her iconic bob, which as you can see here, I don't have it on her. The reason for that is that I'm gonna be doing my own faux bob with my own real hair to do her. I have dressed her in a polka dotted chiffon top with ruffles on the neck and a v-neck. Um, I have accessorized with a long string of pearls and I have a velvet skirt. Now these are all things that I already had including the beanie that you'll see here. She did rock a beanie. Sometimes she'd tie a scarf around it. Um, I am also going to add my black fishnet stockings and black short heeled Mary Janes with that. And last but not least, Theta Barra, known 1920s sex symbol. And we're gonna be doing the Egyptian version just to spice it up a bit. With that, I have the longer haired wig. Theta Barra was known for her longer curly hair. And I have a Egyptian headdress. And then I chose these shoes, not necessarily because they were 20s, but because they looked more of an Egyptian style, sandal style, you know what I mean, where I'm going with that. And they would look good with all the jewels and, uh, and everything. It would look more uh, Egyptian. Now these are all things that I already had except for just a couple of things. I bought the snakes which I hot glued to a bra that I had, a strapless bra that I had. I have a bangle and this is actually a black pair of harem pants which I love. If you don't have any harem pants get some because they're great. They're really comfortable. And then I have a chain belt, which belonged to my mother, and a long um, gold scarf, which I'm going to tuck into my pants and let hang in the front. And then I have this, just a nice bracelet that I thought kind of looked Egyptian. And then I'm also going to have a um, rhinestone choker there. So... I think I'm going to use the shawl as well, uh, which is another thing that I already had. I literally only bought two items for this entire outfit, but it's going to look really good. So we'll get started. So as you can see, my hair is in rollers and we'll be starting with Clara Bow. Clara Bow is one of my favorite uh, silent film stars. I mean, she was the it girl of the 1920s. She was, if you can imagine, some of you younger folks out there, she was to the 20s what Molly Ringwald was for the 80s. So uh, maybe you can understand that a little better if you don't know who Clara Bow is. She was an amazing actress um, in silent film. And she's actually one of the only ones, I should say, of the silent film era that successfully transitioned to the talkies. The talkies were introduced in 1927 and it was after the silent film era and that's when they called them the talkies, but that's when people would actually start having dialogue in films rather than um, just sort of note cards that would come on between scenes and tell you what was going on. So what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm um, putting on some foundation. Everybody knows how to do that. <laughs> but I actually uh, did glue my eyebrows down because I want to make a new eyebrow line for Clara. Uh, hers were very close to her eyelid. I'm not going to go so close as, sh as hers were. I'm just going to go a little lower than my actual brow. And I might have to put a little more glue on there because it's not really covering very well. Might need another layer. 
So the whole glue thing wasn't working and that's totally okay. What we're gonna do is not be exactly like Clara, but we're gonna be as much like Clara as possible uh, by working with what God gave us. So uh, back in the 20s, what they would do is they did a very thin brow and they would go all the way past where their brow line ended, almost meeting up with the corner of their eye. So drawing in, we wanna make sure it stays real thin. So my eyebrows go up really high. I've got a lot of area. If you don't have a lot of space between, awesome, roll with it. So, going all the way down. Cause that is what Miss Clara did. And actually a lot of women of the 20s did that. It's part of the flapper style. So I have a little smudger just to make it look a little more natural. I'm going to smudge. And that's my eyebrow. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side as I knock everything over. So we're going to do the other side. I do have some of these, just in case I make a mistake. These are great. My Aunt Judy got me these for my birthday. Oh, she got me a lot of stuff, but not just that. So I'm gonna smudge again. Oh, that's my two brows. Maybe I'll just do a more serious look and then they go down a little further. Upon observation of Clara Bow, I also noticed that I think she used a white liner, which makes sense because her eyes, if you'll notice in every picture, they looked huge. So um, what white liner does, if you put it on your waterline, is it makes your eyes look bigger. She had already big eyes, and I have already put some on, but so um, put some white liner on. Now we're gonna go to blush. And what I have here is a blush palette from Ulta Beauty. Just face it, it's a complete palette. It's got all the colors we'll need uh, in there. Also blushes. They used a pinkier blush back in the 20s. Um, and I'm probably gonna go with a, a charcoal, this, this color here, like a gray color. That was the big uh, the big color in the 1920s was the charcoal gray. Now a lot of people are skeptical about doing uh, a smoky eye. They're worried that they're going to look like a raccoon. But the secret of a smoky eye is just to blend it a lot better. You don't want to just leave it like a circle or <laughs> you're going to look like Spuds McKenzie. So you want to blend your your charcoal eye, anytime you're working with a darker color, just if you blend it well enough, it won't look like that. So I'm just gonna dab some on. And I think just on the lid and around the bottom, I'm gonna put a darker color. And I have one here that's like a black color. That's what we'll do for Clara. So Clara Bow was born in 1905. And she really wanted to be an actress. And she would practice in front of the mirror in secret because her mom despised the idea of her being an actress. She did not want that to happen at all. Her mom was also clinically insane. So Clara would practice in the mirror while her mom wasn't looking because it was what she loved to do. And then one day Clara just decided to enter a contest in the newspaper and she ended up winning the contest. As a result, she became uh, one of the girls in the Ziegfeld Follies. So you can see what I'm doing there. I kind of just got to stop and show you. I don't know if the light is, you can see it in this lighting. So after she made success, she, um, she came home to visit one time and her mom actually pulled a knife on her because she didn't want her acting and you know that really set her off so she pulled a knife on Clara and because of that her mom was institutionalized and unfortunately her dad had sexually abused her so now that I've done the 
charcoal around my eyes or on my eyelid I should say I'm gonna go with this darker color just on the lid and underneath I think I'm just gonna do the outer part of my lid like right there that accents the almond shape of the eye and then we just go right under the lid the bottom lid That's what we're going for. Clara Bow was an amazing actress. Everybody loved her. She was the life of the party. She was said to be a bit promiscuous. Uh, she was a wild child in Hollywood. And she, she basically didn't take any crap off of anybody. If she didn't want to do it, she didn't do it. If she wanted to do it, she damn sure was gonna do it. She was that kind of chick which I could admire. Nobody was gonna tell her no. So now we definitely need mascara. And I do that funny, I know. You can laugh if you want to. I just blink. It gets the lashes all the way through. <laughs> so for lashes, I just got regular lashes. They're not super long. They're not super over-exaggerated or anything like that. And the reason for that is they weren't doing that back then. They weren't doing the super exaggerated that big fluffy lashes you know they were just just the regular lashes if they had them if not it was just mascara and sometimes they do twiggies on the bottom eyelid if you don't know what twiggies are twiggy was a fashion model in the 1960s she became very popular for a certain technique she would use uh with her eyes and it was where she would draw lashes on the bottom lid and it would look in pictures like there were real lashes. They were very kind of chunky and um, she became very well known for that. So they weren't calling them twiggies back in the 1920s, but they would sometimes draw their lashes on. They were very artsy. Okay, now I'm gonna put my falsies on. Another thing they didn't do, they didn't have the big fat lips, you know? They didn't want their lips looking big. They, you know, they drew them almost like a little heart. How we draw just on the outside of the pink part, just outside of it to make our lips look fuller, they would draw just on the inside of it to make their lips look smaller. And as for rouge, they would rouge their cheeks and their knees because back then it was considered taboo to show your knees. So they, they wanted to just go against the grain. And uh, because it was taboo, they wanted to be little rebels and they wanted to accent their knees. So they would actually put blush on their knees. Just a little fun fact. But yeah, women wanted to look waif-like they wanted to look really thin women that had more up top some of them would tape their boobs down there they would resort to tight binding of uh you know maybe a, a corset that bound them really tight so that they wouldn't their boobs wouldn't show can i say boobs on here i mean it's a thing it's a body part breasts i don't even know i don't know what the rules are for that I call them what I call them. That's it. Don't flag me. Hey, have you seen some of that stuff they put on TikTok? This is like Sesame Street. I'm just getting the, uh, the glue onto my lash. Then I'm going to put it on. Probably do that off camera. Since... So we're almost there. I just got my eyelashes on. I'm just going to kind of touch up where I kind of rubbed off the uh, eyeshadow a little bit. And I did put some twiggies on this side, so I'm gonna do some twiggies on this side now. Whatever you do to one side, you gotta do, the, do to the other. All right, now I just wanna put a little mascara on my bottom lashes. I don't really ever do that in life. I just do my top ones. <laughs> 
why I don't know I just don't but they did it all all right now a little bit of uh, rouge we're gonna go with the pinkiest one we have and they did more of the apples on the cheek yep I'm gonna do that to the other side and one thing I forgot to do was put powder on. I have some um, air spun here. It's what grandma used to have. This is a translucent powder. I'm gonna use it to kind of seal my makeup. It also has an awesome smell. Make me look a little more fair complected. I have powdered and I am going to do my lips. And I have taken out my curlers. Remember, we're gonna go inside. You wanna make your lips small and dainty and heart-shaped. So, so this is how you're gonna want your lips. And you wanna do a dark, the darker, richer, more vampy colors for what we're in. Not so much like the cherry reds, but more like a, this one's called Vampira. And this is by Kat Von D and her lipsticks smell like Cadbury chocolate eggs just so you know small and dainty and heart shaped as you can see my hair is a little ringletty Shirley Templish we're just gonna comb it out and we're gonna be wearing a beanie so I'm not too concerned about the bangs just combing it out. We're gonna do ourselves a faux bob. And now it wasn't popular back in the day to have um, blonde hair. Most women had darker hair. That, you know, the, that whole blonde thing didn't become popular until like the 1940s. So most women had darker hair. So what I'm gonna do, you can see how I did this going to be rolling it up just like that see how I did that I just rolled it up so when I have it pinned up and about where I want it I'm just gonna pin it it's kind of rolled up around my fingers for this if you have longer bobby pins they work best because you can go kind of all the way through that that roll now I have a faux bob so I'm gonna just do the other side here Sponge curls are amazing if you can sleep on them. I mean, sleep on them. Cause they, it's the only way that I can curl my hair and it actually stays. Everything else, the humidity here in Florida just makes my hair go flat. I mean, I walk out the door and it is flat. But you can see you can comb through it and it keeps that curl. I love the curls around the face. I'm gonna keep that. Just finishing up, kind of pinning it like I want it. Hopefully it turns out okay. look by the women in the 20s would be something like this they uh, they were flappers and they'd wear a lot of lace and ruffles and satin and silk and velvet but this particular uh, top is a lace embellished uh, top and then I got really lucky and found the skirt here, uh, a lace skirt with ruffled embellishments on the bottom. I paid $5 for the top. And I paid $5 for the skirt at the Goodwill. So it was a great deal. It's beautiful. 
It's in great shape. And I just uh, accessorized with some pearls here. And I have some cream or beige wing-tipped uh, short-heeled Mary Jane shoes here. And that's what you're going to want to kind of stick to with the, with the flapper theme. For this look, I have just a scarf tied around the head. Very popular also in the 20s. So it wasn't always a hat or feathered headband, you know. They, they did this a lot back in the 20s and it's just a longer, very thin scarf and it's tied around the head. And then this is just a um, beaded. Now this I had already. I had a lot of this stuff already, but this is easy stuff to kind of find when you're out and about these old fashioned purses. This is one that I had that's really cool. It looks like pearls, but it's actually metal. And then for earrings with this look, I'd go with a, a gold filigree or pearls. And then to accessorize with the bracelets, I picked Cameo because of the peachiness of the material and the um, sort of ecru off-white color. I, I thought a, a Cameo would be nice with that. And then for stockings with this one, because we're wearing off-white and like a champagne color, I was, uh, I would go with the flesh tone fishnets for this. But this is very much what a woman in the 20s would have worn. Uh, it wasn't so much the fringe styles with the long gloves and the cigarette holder and the boas. It was more this style is what you would see. I'm back and we're going to do Olive Thomas. Now for Olive Thomas, she was kind of like the sweetheart of silent film. Even though she was a bit of a party girl, which is ultimately what led to her demise at a very early age, age 25. Olive Thomas was born October 20th, my birthday in 1894. And she passed away September 10th, my mom's birthday, 1920. Her and her husband, Jack Pickford, were on a second honeymoon um, in an effort to save their marriage. They went on a second honeymoon and they came back to their hotel in Paris after she had stayed up for a while after Jack had gone to bed. She had stayed up for a while reading and um, to help her sleep she concocted this um, deadly mixture of mercury and I forget what the other thing was but it ended up killing her. She was sent to the hospital and basically she was blinded by the solution and her vocal cords had been burned so badly that she couldn't speak and she ended up passing away. Prior to that, she was America's sweetheart in silent film. You can see that. I'm just doing a brown on the lid for her. Very easy. I'm going to do this other one. And I'm just going to sort of reshape my eyebrows a little bit. And I'm going to lighten up my lipstick. As you can see, I left on the dark. But I'm going to lighten it up a bit to be a little sweeter. We're not going to go below the lid at all for this one. Um, just a brown on the lid. Should look like that. I'm gonna blend a little bit more. And then I'm gonna round out my brow. And just to lighten up the lips, using Mother. It's a pink, kind of a mauve pink, also by Kat Von D. And that's it. Olive Thomas. I'm gonna get dressed and take some photographs.
another look you can go with is a simple pleated chiffon dress. This one here I got at the thrift store. I believe it was $15 because it still had the tag on it. It's from H&M. I just left uh, a string of pearls here for accessories and this is actually a real mink stole belonged to my great grandmother but it, it looks gorgeous with the dress because it's blue so you want to kind of maybe go with a neutral you you could do black as well but i kind of like the way the brown looks against the navy blue and for shoes just some low heeled navy blue wing tips these also came from a thrift store so um these are all things you can find at the thrift store. They have a lot of these styles. If you think about like the mother-in-law dresses uh, that women wear to weddings, if you have a little bit of a larger figure, those are something that you can wear as well because they almost always have a dropped waistline. So that was very popular in the 1920s. So that would be very, uh, very accurate for your party. To accessorize with this one because we used the mink stole perhaps you're in a cooler area of the United States I'm in Florida but I have a felt hat here that would go very cute with the dress this again I bought years ago something I already had but if you're going to go with a hat you're gonna do like the bucket style hats were very popular in the 1920s to um, accessorize I chose a couple of different purses this one had some blue hues in it, and it's just a regular uh, vintage beaded purse. Or you could go with the, the pearl looking uh, purse as well, since you would be accessorizing with pearls. And then I went with a simple pearl earring. And um, again, a neutral or flesh tone fishnet is what I would use for this look. Now, if you are in Florida or somewhere where it's warm and tropical, you can alter this look and I will show you how. So for a more summer look, if you're in a tropical region like myself, you're going to want to go with something a little more summery, something that you're not going to get hot in. So I've got the same dress here, same strand of pearls, the um, accordion style or pleated dress. Um, it's kind of a chiffon material, same shoes, you know, these will be good for summer or winter because they are closed toed, um, wing tip. And instead of the felt hat, you just find a beautiful scarf that about the same colors as the dress or, you know, similar colors or a, even a pattern on there that's a similar color. And you would rock that instead of a hat because that's going to be a lot cooler in the summertime or the winter time that feels like summertime, I should say. <laughs> so that's all you would do is um, to change the look up a little bit, make it a little more heat friendly. Just opt for the scarf rather than the felt hat and the um, fur. Next, we're gonna do Louise Brooks. Now, Louise Brooks was a silent film actress in the 1920s and the 1930s. Her success only went as far as silent film, and she didn't quite make it into the talkies. I think she was in one talkie with John Wayne when she was a little bit older, and that was like the last film of her career. So, Louise Brooks was known for her short bob, straight bob, not like um, Clara Bow's, where it was curly and wavy. Clara Bow did the waves, um, but, Louise Brooks had a short, sleek bob. I don't know if you've ever seen the music video for George Michael, a uh, father figure. That woman always reminds me of Louise Brooks, but um, it's a popular style that even kind of recirculated in the 80s after that video was made. So she also had very straight eyebrows and I'm using black liner for that. I'm going to try and make mine as straight as possible. Hers were very straight. And um, 
So I'm, I've already put on my foundation. I've used a light powder. Again, they weren't about the, uh, the tans in the 20s so much, but in the 30s, Coco Chanel was the one to introduce the tan and it was by accident. She had gone out on a yacht on a vacation and she, when she came back, she had uh, fallen asleep on the yacht in the sun and she came back with this beautiful tan. And that's when people started really liking the way the tan looked and she kind of started the whole tan craze, just so you know. But um, I'll stop rambling on. We're gonna do our eyebrows really straight, straight as we can for Louise. Now Louise Brooks, she wanted to be a dancer. She really wasn't interested in being a film actress so much. But people saw her and she got discovered. They fell in love with her look and she had really nice legs too. So worked out for her. You ever see a woman's eyebrows and they kind of look like pork chops? Louise Brooks had the kind of pork chop eyebrow. Straight across, but fatter inside. Very much like that, just straight. So we're doing a Louise Brooks brow. There that is. I'm gonna do the other one. I have a very high arch in my brow, so making them straight is a little bit of a task. So with Louise Brooks, we're gonna use a sort of dark brown around the eyes. You probably can't see it very well on this palette. And this palette doesn't have any names for the colors, but if you have a dark brown, it's like really dark brown, almost black. And I'm just gonna use that on my eyelids and I'm just gonna go right around the bottom lid. And we are gonna use a black liner on our waterline. Also, our dress is brown, so it'll look very nice. So she just did right around her eyes. Really accented the eyes. Everyone back then, for the most part, had a vampier look. That's what they kind of called it, was vamp. Dark around the eyes, dark lipstick. You know, that was very in. You can see that, it just accents the eye. And then I'm gonna go around my bottom lid, and then I'm gonna do the other one. Bottom lid, I'm gonna go all the way across. Should look about like that when we're done. So I'm gonna do the other eye, off camera, and then we'll do our waterline in black. So we have a very charcoal-y eye with a kind of a straight brow. If you already have straight brows, that's awesome. You're gonna roll with it if you're gonna be, um, if you're going with this look. Next, we'll do a little bit of blush. Like I said, you're gonna get the like pinkier ones. And just right, I did it right there. Like to us these days, it looks clown-like, but back then, that's what they were doing. Rosy cheeks. And then she was a very dark, um, her look was very dark and vamp-like, so we're gonna do a black liner on the waterline. And then I'm gonna go off camera and do my lashes, and then we'll do our lips. I put my eyelashes on, and I am Louise Brooks. Just need a little lipstick. Remember, we're going on the inside of our lips. So, Louise Brooks, career spanned from 1925 to 1938. Mostly silent film, and she was also a Sigfield Follies girl in her early career because she was a great dancer. And she ended up passing away in 1985. So she lived quite a while. She was a heavy smoker and a heavy drinker. So she actually passed away of emphysema and a pretty chronic serious problem that she had with her hip. Probably from all the dancing, all the years of dancing. But as far as her personality goes, she was very much like Clara Bow. She was kind of promiscuous. She got herself caught up in some scandals and Basically, um, Clara Bow was one of her idols that she grew up with, and she became a lot like her. So, I like them both very much. I've lined my lips.
and I've got to go inside with my darker color. This is uh, again Vampira from Kat Von D. You like my wig? My daddy actually got me this wig. Years ago, I was selling hats at the flea market and he bought this for me so I could display my hats. And I cut it into um, a Louise Brooks bob. It's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna get dressed and we're gonna take some photographs. See you in a minute. But not least, Vita Barra. Vita Barra was a known sex symbol and she was a silent film star for the majority of her career. Her nickname was The Vamp. And she was basically typecast into these roles that were darker, more mysterious. And she made over 40 films between 1914 and 1926. Um, most of which perished in the 1938 Fox Vault Fire. There are only six copies of her films known to be still in existence. But we're going to do her Cleopatra look tonight. And if you'll notice, I kept on all my, all my Louise Brooks makeup on. And I'm just going to darken it. So we had a brown on, and you can do this at home. Like you'll start with the brown and you're just gonna darken uh, basically the sides and underneath with a black or as dark of a charcoal as you can get to give it that more vampy look. So I'm just gonna take the black and go in the corners just to make it darker. Dita Barra was even darker. It's interesting because she was such a femme fatale and so sexy and desirable to all the men. And she ended up being married for a really long time and, and very loyal to this one man. So it was quite admirable for her to be in such a position where she could have any man that she wanted to and she still you know, stayed true to her husband, which was really awesome. Going darker. Under the eye as well. So that's all you're gonna do for Theta Barra. It's all you're gonna have to do if you're already done up. <laughs> as Louise Brooks. You're just going in the corners with the dark. And we have Theta Barra. Didn't even have to do much else. So I'm gonna put on my Theta Barra costume and I'll see you in a minute. Thank you for joining me again today. I hope you got a lot out of this. I know it was a little bit longer of a video, but that's my New Year's gift to you. And I hope you have an awesome new year. A lot of joy and prosperity to you all this new year. I hope that you will still be part of my YouTube family. I'll see you next year.